Hey everybody, it's the Real Estate Roundtable channel and today we have Don Costa as our wonderful guest here in Sacramento. So a lot of people were interested in, you know, you're doing great and then the market crashed and like how do you get back up on your feet and you said, you know, you just called someone on a Craigslist ad that says, you know, we buy houses and you went to open houses and you didn't really have a lot of money to spend on marketing so you just networked and networked and networked until you got a deal. So for people that may have like lost it in the crash and you know are trying to still come out of the hole, like what is the one thing you could really tell them? Back to the whole conversation about me being on the couch for a year. I, I, I started having this conversation with myself, a chair, about basically, you know, uh, this sucks. Like I can't get a job, I was trying to get a job, I couldn't get a job, I was in a situation where I was overqualified for the stuff that didn't require a degree and I only had an associate's degree for the stuff that required a degree so no one was wanting to give me a job and and it was getting tighter and tighter and tighter money wise and the uh, you know the only option I really felt I had was a post on Craigslist it was free you know at the time and I just threw one on there I was like experience flipper looking for somebody to back him you know uh, partner with with him on money or something like that must be close enough to have a cup of coffee and so I got six calls and I ended up meeting with one of the guys and uh, he talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. Did he talk? Oh my goodness, he <laughs> talked. And we met, we talked, we'd sit and he talked for hours and I spent a lot of time listening about how great he was. But, uh, you know, we, we, we just hung out and he was talking and, and finally one day, it was, it's the craziest thing, I always kind of gloss over it, but. I was sitting with them at Starbucks and, I, and my, my, my phone buzzed, right? And I look at my phone and my wife had texted me that uh, our water had been shut off. And this guy hadn't committed to lending yet and uh, my wife should have left me by the way. Because <laughs> like everything was going wrong, but uh, the, <laughs> I was a loser. We'll get to that. Yeah, I was a loser. Uh, <laughs> so, but the, our water got shut off and I'm sitting there and the guys, and I just like zoned. My, I'm ADD, my mind's going 100 miles an hour. He's talking about how great he is. And, and I'm not trying to say that sarcastically, like he just, he loved to talk about himself and what he'd done. So um, I started thinking to myself, you know, this this sucks. You know, you have your blood kind of drains from your head. And I'm like, you know, I should go home and fix this problem. It's Friday, I'm not get the water turned back on. And then I just kind of snapped out of it, like I'm closing this guy. And so I, I just turned the conversation and I kind of, I was just like, look, you know, I, we need to do this or not do this. I need to know, do you, you know, do you got my back or not? And he ended that conversation, he ended up agreeing to back me on a deal. Did I, you know, go ahead and go find a deal and I'll back you. And I went home and because I flipped houses before I knew how to turn the water on. It was Friday. There was no way they were going to turn the water on. And, uh, <laughs> do you know who I am? I know how to turn, turn on the water. water. <laughs> so I went out there and I turned my own water on. And uh, I had water for the weekend, but I closed them. It's, it's funny because for me, when you start to, I, the more I talk about it, I start to realize that the, the moral, the, the underlying moral of the story or the, um, the trend seems to be the same every single time. I run up against something that really, really sucks and that forces me to do something to make a change. I don't tend to make a change. I'm like most people. I'm not, I'm not that smart. I don't do that many great things. I just, Whenever I run up against something that, that I really hate, I don't necessarily always put my head in my sand. I make, and in the sand, I make a, a change that's pretty significant. And so um, I made that change and uh, you know, I got him to back me and we went out and found a deal and made 20 grand. Uh, I got 10, the money was gone before I got it, but I was back in business and you weren't gonna stop me. That 10 grand changed your life, huh? Changed my life. Cool, so your wife should have left you, you're a loser, you're sitting on the couch for a year. Yeah, she, she should have, uh, She well, I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I don't know if she you should have. You went through a hard time. We went through, that's we went what, through a hard time. You know, yeah. marriages, you're there thick and thin, but was she supportive or like, how was your marriage during um, that it was, time? It was tough, she was scared. She wasn't, she's never been supportive of me being an entrepreneur. We actually did a whole podcast episode on this. Um, where she came in and I actually interviewed her about it. She she's she's a she's been a teacher her whole career right out of college. She became a teacher. She still teaches. She job shares um, a couple days a week. 
and she hasn't been entrepreneurial. And so her whole mindset always was go to work, get a check, go to work, get a check, go to work, get a check. And so when, when I, we got married right out of the gate, I was like, I'm going to, you know, start a business. Did you have a job when you guys were married? Before you technically no. I did I, well I, I did and I quit my job to open a business I quit my job to open a different business that didn't work out and then we got married and I still didn't have a job and I was like I'm and she's like you need to get a job and I'm like I'm gonna go back to college and she's like you need to get a job and I was like well then I'm gonna start a business. And, I'm gonna uh, create jobs yeah. now. And that's that was my first iteration in real estate investing, but I was like I have I have no kids and I'm gonna have kids and if I don't do it now I never will. So and she was dead set against it. And even when the money started coming in, she's like, well, it's not real, it's not gonna last forever. And all of a sudden I started making really good money and she bought into it, hook, line, and sinker, and then we lost everything. So, uh, yeah, all, 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 yeah, all that all that happened was I validated everything she was ever scared of. So imagine her surprise when I looked at her and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this again. <laughs> uh, How'd that conversation go? It actually surprisingly wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, she still was concerned, but I think she realized that I was good at it. I understood it. She wasn't going to change that part of me. But at the same time, I wasn't. It wasn't like I wasn't. I was trying to get jobs. I just wasn't getting jobs. Right. It wasn't, you know, I, I didn't get back into real estate because I knew that I was going to be successful and I got this. I got back into real estate because I had no other choice. I was still scared to death of it. And I thought I was a failure. I thought I failed because real estate. I failed because I was an idiot. And looking back on it now, I had to run my business then like I run my business now. We wouldn't be talking. I'd be retired on a beach somewhere, you know, having a good old time. I Is was that your stupid. ultimate goal? No. I will do what I do probably. <laughs> will you forever. be completely bored if you're on a beach somewhere? Yeah, I'm a builder of things. I, I would. That's the, the truth about most entrepreneurs is they'll probably be an entrepreneur to the day they die. So you don't want to retire? No. We no. see that a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I want it to work less and less often, but I don't want to retire. I'm, I'm, I, I love doing what I'm doing. I love, I love, I'll probably do other things, but. Because you're not be. really tired. It's more exciting of the thing that you're building, my, right? I don't play golf, you know, that kind of thing. My, my hobby is, is building my business and my business is built exactly the way I want it. I'll build something else. You know, that's just what I like to do. That's what gets me out of bed for you. So. Yeah, and that's way different than hustling. It's way different than hustling. Because it's exciting, you know, yeah. you actually get to create your own reality every day and really help people in your business and help people get, you know, great homes. I agree. Don't lock ourselves in the office. Okay. It's about getting out there and talking to people. Um, networking, um, you know, and building your business through, through relationships. It's about... It's about being part of a community that's bigger than, than just yourself. You know, I mean, it's it's just a philosophy that I, I've had because my business is built on networking. And I think a lot of people think that if they chase this shiny object or that shiny object, their business is going to be that much more successful. And um, and my business is built on a couple of things: networking being number one, and then you know I do direct mail. I'm very big in direct mail. Um, I understand it. You, you you'd be amazed at. I mean, I, I was doing, you know, basically 100 deals a year off of networking and hardly any other advertising. Um, so it's possible. It's possible. You know, like I said, you get one agent that sends you three deals a year. And now you have 10, 10 of those relationships and now you're doing 30 deals a year. Everybody's like, Just kind of like compounds. It compounds. And, and, you know, a lot of people think, well, the agents are only good for one or two deals a year. Why am I going to waste my time? Because that stacks up, you know. And uh, so i built my business on networking and then when i decided that i was going to go big into marketing i went into one channel and now that i mastered that channel you know i went into another channel and until i master that channel i won't go to another channel i was just talking to somebody this weekend that they're like we got eight thousand dollars a month to spend and we're going to do uh rvms and postcards and facebook and we're going to do ppc i was like what market are you in? We're like, they're like southern california and i'm like you're going to go broke you know, marketing, you're not mastering anything. Yeah, marketing has this 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 like arch, this hockey stick. Where down here, you're spending money, you're just throwing it away. And it's not until you cross that threshold in marketing where you start getting enough traction and consistency, where you start making money. And a lot of people think that they can chase every shiny object. They don't give number one. They don't give it the time to work, and they're they're splitting their investment into so many different things that they're not giving it the consistency either. And so. 
I don't just say that's what you should do, that's what I do. You know, I, I stick to one thing until I've dialed it in and I've taken it as far as it can go in my market. And as soon as I've hit that kind of point of diminishing returns where it doesn't matter how much more money I spend, I'm not gonna get any more result, that's when I go to another channel. That makes sense. Do you so. do like party envelopes? Or what's your direct mailer? I'm, I'm big postcard guy. Postcard? I, I, I'm big postcard Do you guy. use um, that one thing where it takes a picture of the house and it sends them, what's it called? Are you going you know to leave my answer out? <laughs> <laughs> the secret. If you were here, you would know what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, Deal maker. That's yeah. what it's what it's called. I, I, I actually use different variations of postcards. It's not, I will tell you right now that the postcard does not matter as much as the consistency in the list. Oh. So. Uh, yeah, I think people just send out postcards like, oh, I didn't really get any responses. Well. You're not consistent. Or you didn't send enough out, you know? Uh, Interesting. Let's just say your average cost per deal is three thousand uh, dollars to get a deal, and you're mailing five hundred dollars a month. The then you're going to take six months to get a deal, or somewhere in there, right? I mean, so you know, you got you got to figure out what what your cost per deal is. Um, the whole reverse engineer thing I was talking about, you know, figure out what your cost per deal is, figure out what your profit is per deal, figure out what you want to make, now reverse engineer that, you know, how much you need to spend per month to make what you want to make for the year. And uh, I just don't think people are being real about what it takes. I, if I was, I enter new markets, if I was entering a new market right now, I would pick four or five zip codes, would they build a list just as big as I can handle as far as my budget and have at least a six month runway. Wow, okay. You know. Sending out. And then I would hit that list every single month. Month. If not if not every month, every six weeks, and no six more weeks. than every eight weeks, of like the worst case scenario. And I would do it for about six months. Okay. And I would track the results. Now, if you send it out for a couple months and you get like no calls, then there's a problem that you need to correct. But if you're getting calls and you're not quite getting deals yet, you maybe get deals when you do follow up. You maybe get deals because you, you may not be getting deals because you suck at closing deals. It may not be the postcard. So you need to start looking at, okay, well, I'm getting calls, I'm getting appointments, but I'm not closing. These are something else I need to fix in my organization. But they'll go back and go, direct mail doesn't work. Well, no, you just. You don't work. You don't know how to close a deal. <laughs> so, but you know, you start looking at these things, right? You start taking the data in and you start uh, making whatever course corrections you need to make to be successful at it. Yeah, and it's just consistency is key. Consistency is absolutely key. And follow-up. Fortune follow -up. is in the follow-up, right? Yeah, oh my goodness, 40% of my business last year. Follow-up. What's your follow-up system? We, uh, it's called just enough to not get the police called. <laughs> <laughs> just under the police. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hate us by the time we're through with you. Uh, follow up. Basically, I mean, my team is required to make 40 outbound follow up calls a day. Now, can they do that every day? No. Like, we have uh, days, a few days this, this week where, you know, when, we, when our drops hit, we had like 250 calls come in in one day. And I have four lead managers. There's no way they're going to make 40 outbound follow up calls. But their goal is that. So even on days like that, they're still making follow up calls. And you know, on days where the ebb and flow of the calls is lower, they're making 40 follow up calls a day. 11 months, huh? 11 months. Yeah, basically, uh, the, the, the funny thing about that is we got a call, we went on the appointment. Okay. The numbers didn't work. Okay. Uh, for what she wanted and what we could get her down to and what we needed to get the property for. And uh, we kept following up to see if things had changed and nothing had changed in her situation, mm -hmm. ironically, but what had happened is the comps had went up. And, nice. now, and now the numbers work <laughs> and we had to buy that property. So you never know, right? I mean, it could be a situation where the seller situation changes. It could be a situation where they become more real realistic in their number or it could be a situation where the comps changed. And uh, that in that particular situation, that, that one became a deal and we ended up closing on it. And uh, in fact, it, it was a really good deal for us. So uh, we're just, I'm very, very bound and determined for, you know, for, uh, my team to be doing follow up and being very aggressive follow up. We have we have the email, the auto auto responder or email or the e auto email, the auto text, um, always going out. We have the follow up phone calls live. We're doing RVMs to our database. We're dropping our RVMs saying, Hey, you know, you called in a while back and I don't know, we didn't buy your house. We want to try to see if you want to sell. That's working for us. We're getting appointments off of that. So uh, 
they just, yeah, I mean, I'm going to say it and people are going to watch this and then they're going to think, eh, I'm too busy to do follow up. They're never going to do it. And that is why I'm crushing it and you are not. The fortune so, is in the, the follow up. So even if you just had a follow up system, that's where you're going to kill it. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you so much for your time, Don. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. you are awesome. Thank and you. we're really excited to see your whole year and how you just killed some more. I appreciate it. Million dollars a month, yo. That's my <laughs>